Photos can be too dark, too bright, or just right. When the image is just right, we call this a properly exposed image. Proper exposure is the first requirement we will discuss for obtaining a quality image. Let's do it. Hello and welcome to another video from The Comprehensive Dentist. My name is Dr. B and in this video, we are talking about factors that affect good exposure. Good photos do not happen by accident. If you want good, consistent images, it starts with understanding settings on your camera and how they affect your photos. When you look at a great photograph, whether it be a beautiful portrait, landscape, or dental photo, you will notice that the image has proper exposure, meaning it is not too bright or too dark. You will also notice that it has a sharp focus so that the subject can be clearly seen. The image will also have a good composition. In this video, we look at exposure, but this is only one aspect of what makes a great photo. In future videos, we will look at focus and composition in detail and explore what factors affect each of these qualities. Proper exposure means that the image is not too bright or too dark. Another way of saying this is not overexposed or underexposed. But what affects exposure? The three significant factors that affect exposure are the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO. A fourth factor that doesn't really affect the amount of light, but instead the image's temperature is called white balance. The camera allows us to control all of these factors affecting exposure, and it is essential that we know how each of these influences our image. We are trying to balance all of these factors to get a good picture. Let's look at each one. Aperture affects exposure and light because it refers to the lens diaphragm opening that controls the amount of light that reaches the sensor. So how open or closed the lens is. The more open the diaphragm is, the more light that enters, and the more closed, the less light that enters. The opening and closing of the diaphragm are controlled by adjusting the aperture on the camera. Aperture is measured in f-stops. A low f-stop means that the aperture is more open and more light will reach the sensor. In contrast, a high f-stop means that the aperture is smaller and less light reaches the sensor. F-stops may seem a little counterintuitive, or at least I thought so when I first learned about aperture. To help, I like to think of the f-stop as how good the aperture is at stopping light from entering the camera. With this line of thinking, a small f-stop would mean it is not very good at stopping light and allows a lot of light in. And a high f-stop would imply that it is very good at stopping light and allows very little light into the camera. Aperture also affects the depth of field in the image or how much of the image is in focus from front to back within the image. We will talk more about depth of field when we discuss focus in a future video. So on our camera, how do we adjust the aperture? Well, now is a good time to talk about different shooting modes on the camera. Depending on which shooting mode you choose, the camera will allow you to control specific factors affecting exposure. I typically shoot dental photography in manual mode, meaning I have complete control over my aperture or f-stop and control over my shutter speed, which we will discuss shortly. Another mode where I can adjust aperture is aperture priority mode, seen as AV on a Canon camera. When this mode is selected, I can control the aperture, but the shutter speed is determined by the camera, depending on what f-stop I choose. In manual mode, proper exposure is dependent on me getting the aperture and shutter speed correct. In aperture priority mode, I pick the aperture or f-stop, and the camera selects the best shutter speed to match my aperture. When I choose my aperture setting, it is based on depth of field, which we will discuss later. So here's an image that demonstrates how open or closed the aperture diaphragm is at specific f-stops. As you can tell, the aperture is open a lot at lower f-stops and mostly closed at higher f-stops. Again, 
think about how much light is entering the camera. At a low f-stop, a lot of light can enter, and at a high f-stop, less light can enter the camera. For dental photos, I adjust the aperture mode more than any other setting I control. I will shoot at lower aperture for full face images to allow more light into the camera for better exposure. You see, I typically shoot my dental photos using a 100 millimeter macro lens. This lens is good at shooting smaller objects, so it works great for dentistry. If I want to use it to take pictures of a patient's face, I have to move back really far from the patient to fit their entire face in the image. As I move farther from the subject, less light from the subject will reach the camera. One way to compensate for less light and underexposed images is to decrease the aperture using a lower f-stop. A lower f-stop will allow more light to enter the camera and thus make for better exposure. This increased exposure using a lower f-stop comes at a trade-off though. I get more light, but less of my image is now in focus. This effect on focus will make more sense when we talk about depth of field. The next factor that affects proper exposure is shutter speed. Shutter speed is also known as exposure time. Shutter speed is the amount of time that the shutter is open. The shutter is located behind the reflex mirror in a DSLR camera. Shutter speed represents the amount of time the sensor is exposed to light entering the camera. The shutter speed is measured in seconds. This measurement could be tenths or hundredths of a second or longer periods like one second up to 30 seconds of exposure. So how does shutter speed affect exposure? Regarding light, fast shutter speeds mean that the shutter opens and closes quickly, not allowing a lot of light to reach the sensor. Whereas slow shutter speeds result in the shutter staying open longer, allowing a lot of light to reach the sensor. Faster shutter speeds have the potential to make images dark or underexposed, and slow shutter speeds have the potential to make images bright or overexposed. So now that we understand how shutter speed affects light, how else can it affect our image? Well, much like aperture affects light and depth of field, or how much of the image is in focus, shutter speed affects light and affects motion blur. So let's say you want to take a picture of a moving object. The moving object could be a person jumping into the air or a car. If you take the photo using fast shutter speeds, it will result in the shutter opening and closing quickly, allowing a smaller amount of light to enter the camera. A faster shutter speed will freeze a subject in the image and reduce motion blur. You see, motion blur is a natural thing. Our eyes see motion blur when we look at a moving object. When you take an image with a fast shutter speed, you freeze the moving object in the photo almost as if it stopped moving long enough to take the photograph. In contrast, a slow shutter speed results in the shutter opening and closing much slower, allowing more light to enter the camera. Because more light is entering the camera, it picks up light from the object moving, and thus the image captured contains motion blur. So on our camera, how do we adjust shutter speed? Earlier, we discussed some shooting modes on the camera. We talked about manual mode and aperture priority mode. As I said earlier, I typically shoot dental photography in manual mode, meaning I have complete control over my aperture or f-stop and control over my shutter speed. So one way to control shutter speed would be to shoot in manual mode. Another mode where I can adjust the shutter speed is shutter priority mode seen as TV on a Canon camera. When this mode is selected, I can control the shutter speed, but the aperture is determined by the camera, depending on what shutter speed I choose. In manual mode, proper exposure is dependent on me getting the aperture and shutter speed correct. I pick the shutter speed in shutter priority mode, and the camera selects the best aperture to match my shutter speed. I would choose my shutter speed in shutter priority mode based on if I want motion blur or not. I prefer a longer or slower shutter speed for more motion blur. And for no motion blur or freezing a shot, I would choose a fast shutter speed. When we talk about dental photography, our subjects are not typically moving for the photos. So shutter speed is not a factor of exposure we typically change much or at all.
I usually start with a shutter speed of one two hundredth of a second and adjust minor amounts to make the image brighter or darker depending on the exposure. Typically shutter speed for dental photos will be anywhere between one and one sixtieth of a second and one two fiftieth of a second. The next factor we will discuss that affects proper exposure is ISO. ISO represents how sensitive the camera, specifically how sensitive the camera sensor is to light. By adjusting the ISO, we can change how sensitive the sensor is to the light. The ISO is a numeric value. A lower ISO or lower number means the camera is less sensitive to light. Contrast, a higher ISO or higher number means the camera is more sensitive to light. Most of the time, we try to keep the ISO as low as possible. A situation where it is advantageous is in low light conditions. We use flash for dental photography, so we usually have no shortage of light. The flash illuminates the patient very well. If you were taking a photo of a subject in a dimly lit room with no flash or external lighting, it would be more challenging to get a well exposed image. Increasing the ISO in this situation will make the camera more sensitive to the existing light you have in the room, increasing the brightness and exposure of the image. So increasing the ISO is useful for situations where you are shooting in low light and it will make the sensor more sensitive to light. But it comes at a trade-off. When using a higher ISO, your image will have better exposure, but it will also have a grainy or noisy appearance. Your lighting will be better, but the overall quality may not be great due to the grainy or noisy appearance. Thankfully, when we shoot dental photography, we use a flash, which gives us a lot of light on our subject. Because we have adequate amounts of light, we don't need to shoot at high ISO. In fact, our ISO is set at the lowest possible setting. The last factor affecting exposure we are going to discuss is white balance. Now the aperture, shutter speed, and ISO directly affect the amount of light and sensitivity to the light entering the camera. White balance will affect the exposure, but not based on the amount of light that's present. The white balance actually represents the temperature of the image affecting how warm or cold the picture looks. You have likely experienced or seen firsthand how light can look different in various settings. For example, light during a sunset will often look warm or have more red-orange tones visible. Lighting under fluorescent light is different than light from the sun. A proper white balance will produce an image that looks natural to the lighting present when taking a photo. The color white should appear white if the white balance is correct. If it seems warm with red tones or cold with blue tones, then the white balance is likely incorrect. The white balance is measured in Kelvin and again represents the temperature of the image. Lucky for us, white balance is not something I frequently have to adjust. Most of the time, I can set my white balance setting on my camera and forget it. Occasionally, I may shoot some images with the wrong white balance setting and thankfully, I can adjust this when I edit. Although you can change the white balance later, it is best to correct it before taking pictures. So if we look at this image, this represents the same smile photo taken with different white balance settings. Now in reality, this photo was likely taken under fluorescent lighting using an ex external flash, but as you can see, we can set the white balance and tell the camera, so to speak, what lighting conditions exist where we are taking photos. For example, if we take pictures outside, a white balance of 5500 Kelvin, seen as a symbol of the sun on the camera would be an appropriate white balance. It would make our image look natural and the whites would actually look white. Any other white balance setting would likely look unnatural and either warm or cold in appearance. Most of the time in dental photography, I will set the white balance to the flash setting or I will put it to the daylight or sun symbol setting of 5500 Kelvin. To recap, we have talked about four factors that influence proper exposure, aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance. You must have a good understanding of these factors and settings on your camera. You may even need to review this section again in the future, and that is okay.
If you fully understand aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance, and how they affect your image, you will be able to troubleshoot and critique your photos. Understanding your photography results and critically analyzing how you can make it better is the next level of understanding of dental photography. The last thing I will mention about exposure is a tool that will help you analyze your image and evaluate the exposure on the camera. And that is the histogram. Every good camera will have a histogram feature that allows you to view your photo and see a histogram that plots out light and dark areas of the image. The histogram is an XY graph with the histogram's left side representing pure black and the right side representing pure white. The light captured in your photo will fall somewhere within the histogram. If the light captured is clustered or favors the histogram's left side, it is closer to black, which means the image is uh, darker or underexposed. By contrast, if the light captured is clustered or favors the histogram's right side, it is closer to white, which means that the image is brighter or overexposed. Ideally, you want to have your light data for your photo fall towards the middle of the histogram, meaning that is not too bright or too dark, but just right. If you take a photo and look at the histogram and notice that it favors the left or right side, you will adjust the aperture, shutter speed, or ISO to push it towards the direction that will give you an image of better exposure. For example, suppose the image appears dark and the histogram shows that the data is clustered toward the histogram's left side. In that case, you could lower the f-stop, allowing more light into the camera, you could use a longer shutter speed, allowing more light into the camera, or you could raise the ISO, making the camera sensor more sensitive to the light. All three of these options will increase the exposure and have different effects as well. If you lower the aperture, allowing more light in, you will also decrease the depth of field, meaning less of the subject in your image will be in focus. If you choose to adjust the shutter speed, making it a slower shutter speed, allowing more light in, this will also increase the possibility of an introducing motion blur into the image. Last, if you raise the ISO making it more sensitive to light, it will also introduce grain or noise into your image. You would not want to adjust all three of these simultaneously because it will likely cause overexposure. So you must choose a factor to change to give you the desired results and minimize the results you don't want. You could also increase the amount of output of light from your flash, which is another topic we'll cover in later videos. All right, so hopefully by now, you have a better understanding of exposure and factors affecting exposure, like aperture, shutter speed, ISO, and white balance. If you learned something new or useful in this video, please hit that like button and subscribe if you have not already. In the next video, we will look at sharp focus and the factors affecting focus of our photos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.